So welcome to this week's Feature Spotlight webinar, where I'm going to lead you through integrations inside MangoMint, and in particular, the MailChimp integration that is available to you and that you can use to synchronize your customer data with the MailChimp platform in order to run email marketing using MailChimp. Uh, if we haven't met before, my name is John Halberg. Uh, and I'm responsible for content at MangoMint as well as at thesalonbusiness.com. Uh, but today, really the objective and like what I want to get out of this is to make sure that when you leave today, you know how to set this integration up, the communication between MangoMint and, and MailChimp. So I'm really going to, I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. And we're going to go through that together. Um, and then I want to give some of the basics of the MailChimp platform so that you know the features that are available to you inside MailChimp and how you can use that to effectively run marketing uh, to your customers using, using the platform. And as we go along, I'll try to throw in some tips and tricks just to help you improve your, improve, uh, your marketing. Um, and there is a chat here. So any questions uh, that comes into the chat, I might take as we go. Uh, or we'll save some time at the end to make sure uh, I can cover that. And I hope we can do this in under 30 minutes. Let's see how exciting this gets. Uh, but uh, I think we can manage it within 30 minutes. So I will be sharing my screen with you uh, going into the uh, MangoMint app and uh, you know showing you how, how all of this works. You should be seeing my screen now. Um, let me just move you over here so that I can keep track of that. Um, so we're now inside MangoMint. Um, if we want to set up integrations, uh, where we need to go is settings. So you find that in the top uh, navigation. Um, and in here at the very bottom, you'll see integrations. So let's click on that. You'll see when you land here that there's a few already pre-built integrations available for you. So MailChimp. We're going to dive deep on in just a moment. You'll, you'll also see gift up waiver forever. Uh, gift up is for gift cards, waiver forever for forms, two integrations that you probably won't need because both forms and gift cards are supported right inside of the, the MangoMint platform. There was a time when that wasn't the case and that's why we still have these integrations available, uh, because we have people who, who still use them. Um, and then you'll have Shopify in here, which is a helpful integration if you run an online store and you want to sell products in your e-commerce store, uh, but you want to have the same products available at your physical location. So what this integration does is just making sure that your inventory is synced between MangoMint and between your online stores. If you sell out of a product you know, in the salon, you know, that doesn't show as available anymore on the website. So that's really to track your inventory if you have that use case. So these are some of the pre-built ones. We also offer custom integration. So if you have some software that is important for you in your business, where you want to make sure the data that you have, so like customer data, inventory, that kind of data is synchronized with that platform or that you can communicate between the platforms. We offer these custom integrations that we call webhooks. If that is something that is interesting for you, uh, what I encourage you to do is to reach out to our support team who have experience with this and they can really help guide you to like how, how, how to set this up and you know what needs to be done in your specific case for that specific tool that you want to use. And overall, our support team is there also for you know if you get stuck on anything on the MailChimp integration or what we're working through, uh, you know, you can always reach out to us there as well. Um, so yeah, but we're going to focus on MailChimp now, which is a really popular email marketing platform. Um, I find it you know, very easy to use. It's an intuitive interface. Uh, still, they offer a lot of advanced features. So um, let me just um, pop over to their website here. Um, so uh, you, know, you have automations that you can set up. And we're going to touch on some of that, uh, even if I'm going to try to more focus on you know, getting the integration set up and some of the basics. But you have some really advanced things in there. Naturally, this is an, another software, right, from another company. So uh, if you're using MailChimp, there will obviously be a price for using their product. Um, but they actually have a free plan as well. So 
how much you pay for using MailChimp really depends on the number of customers you have that you want to synchronize uh, with MailChimp and how many contacts you want to have. Uh, that will influence the price. Um, but yeah, you can start with a free plan with just that supports up to 500 contacts. You probably will want to upgrade to another plan because you get access to some other features. And uh, you also get rid of like the MailChimp branding in, inside your emails. Um, so it's quite possible that you will that you will want to do that. Um, and like I would really use MailChimp for like your marketing, right? So if you want to send out an email to all your customers um, or to a segment of your customers, that's great to use MailChimp for. You can use these automations as well for some more you know, automated messages based on different events that we'll talk about in a bit. Obviously, within the Mangomint platform, you also have automated messages, right? So everything that you can configure in here, everything around appointments, so when an appointment is booked, when an appointment is canceled or a form is submitted, you know, all of that that happens inside of Mangomint, you can configure the messages that you want to, you know, get sent out from Mangomint directly. So really, this is more for... Um, for these type of like marketing um, newsletter campaigns um, that you will manage inside inside of MailChimp. Um, so to get started with MailChimp, when you land on here, you will likely see a button that says uh, start a free trial. Um, so you can just use that. Uh, I just did create the, uh, started a free trial before this session. So I have a completely blank account. So I'm in the same spot, but I just wanted us to save some time. <coughs> um, but if I pop into that, so after you've created your free trial, answered a couple of questions, uh, you will land in something that looks should look very much like this because this is a brand new account. Um, just a quick overview of what you see here. So you'll have uh, campaigns, which is basically like newsletters and things that you want to send out. You have audience, which is your list of uh, contacts and uh, is where we manage that. And then you have automations. We'll, we'll touch on that really briefly today. Uh, and then some other things which I will not go into today. So that's just to give you kind of an overview of what you find inside MailChimp. So what I want to do now is to set up an integration that syncs all your client data with MailChimp. Uh, and in order to do that, uh, we will need to head back into settings, uh, integrations, and then to MailChimp. So what you're gonna need is an API key. That's what uh, MangoMint needs to have, your MailChimp API key in order to get this to work. So if I click on edit here, there's a field for where I can enter that. So where do I find that then? So let's pop back into MailChimp. Uh, you'll find this API key that you need by going to the bottom here. You'll see your name and a little icon next to it. If you click on that one, and then you click on profile, um, you then see extras. Under extras is where you find API keys. So basically that little icon, profile, extras, API keys. So they managed to hide it pretty well, but that's that's where it is. So that's where you need to go. Uh, so just click in on that. Um, so since this is a completely new account, I just created this, just uploaded some pictures for it so we can use that if we want to create some campaigns, but otherwise it's a it's a blank blank account. Um, so what I want to do then is to click on create a key. You need to give that key a name. So in this case, I'm going to call that Mangomint because we're going to use this API key for the Mangomint integration. You could potentially have more of these that are set up for other tools that you want to integrate, but you know we're going to focus on Mangomint. Uh, and then you're going to click on generate key. So this will then create this key for you that you need to copy to clipboard. So you click that. You will only be able to see that key once now. So make sure you copy it uh, because then it's gone. And if you lose, lose it, you just need to generate a new one. So it's not a big deal. But uh, uh, make sure you copy that. And just before I go, up, go in and activate this, I just want to go into all contacts. So you can see what that looks like right now. So there's only one contact in there, which is just this example email from that I used when creating the account. Uh, but if we now want to sync all our contacts, I'm just going to go into the Mangomint app. I'm going to paste that API key that we just copied, and I'm going to hit Next. So what Mangomint does now is just it connects with 
with MailChimp and it will pull up your audiences that you have in there. So since this is a new account, we only have one, which is the default John Salon. It's just what I call this demo account. But it could be that you have a, an existing MailChimp account and you have more uh, like lists in there, more audiences, and then you will need to choose which one of these audiences you want your customers to be synchronized to. So I'm just going to pick John Salon and click Save. And now you will see that your audience is being synced. So right now, all the contacts that you have, so if I go into clients here, all my contacts that I have in here in this demo account uh, is now being synced across to MailChimp. So I can head back into MailChimp. And if I just do a refresh here on the browser, you should see that something, something happens here. So I'll hit refresh. wait for that to load up you can see that it's now 78 contacts uh, so it started to load across i believe if i refresh again um that number will probably continue to go up because i had a more so 109 um there's quite a few customers in there for the uh, for the accounts it takes a little while but you know they're all going to be synced across and then you have them all in your account and let's say I wanted to update one of these customers. I'm going to go into, we have Deborah here. Um, let me go into Deborah. There we go, Deborah House. Um, and let's say we wanted to add a birthday to her account. So we can go to additional details. We'll say that she's born Feb 5, 1995. And we go save. It updated her details with a, a birth date. If I now go back in here and I'll hit refresh, we will see that she now has a birthday as well. So you'll see how this like synchronize with any changes um, that we have. Um, and uh, maybe we wanted to, uh, let's see if I have, do I have any memberships running in here? So yeah, I do have one on, on Debra as well. Um, so we could see if we go into Debra, and uh, you'll also see active membership, yes, because uh, you can see I just created activated two memberships. Uh, so we can also track if she's a member, and uh, some pers personal details in there, and that's all being, being synced across between, between the platforms. Um, so I'm just looking at if there's some questions as well. Uh, uh, so here's actually, so the question is, can I, can I send a um, specific email to my members? Um, so let me come back to that in just a moment. Um, so let me come back to that in a moment. So if I go, we can actually start with that. We can go in and we, uh, walk through how we create an email campaign. So we now have all our customers listed in here. Um, and we want to, let's say we want to first just send out an email to all our customers. So what I would do is just go to campaigns um, and just create a campaign. So basically like a one-off newsletter that we want to send to everyone, uh, to all our customers. We just go create campaign and we will just do a regular email. No automation on this other, we can ignore for now. Just do a regular email, design email. And this will open up the editor where we can uh, where we can build our email. So let's say we can use the new builder. And um, I will just go like start from scratch. And just kind of as a general principle, when we do newsletters, I think what's important is just to 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 make sure that when we send this out, that there's some value right in there for for our customers, and that we don't only say you know come back and book and you know book an appointment, but that we provide some value. So maybe provide, uh, you know, sometimes it could be that we do a, do a promotion or something. Um, it could be that we share some seasonal tips, maybe, you know, if we're doing hair or skin and it's, uh, you know, a dry January, then we might give some tips for that, but like something that is valuable because we want people to open those emails, right? Uh, and that we're not being just doing kind of promotions. So let's say we wanted to maybe promote, let's say we wanted to do an event and that we want to inform about. So uh, we could call this uh, after work at, at uh, John's 
Don's salon. And it just pulled in uh, an example logo here for me. So uh, maybe join us. May 10 for dot 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 for something. And uh, maybe we want to have a picture. Uh, we can just go to browse images. So I'm just using the standard one here. Obviously, you can drag in ele any element that you want. So if you wanted to have a video in here, uh, you could even create like a specific layout section. So I could drop that in and have you know an image sitting in in this one. Uh, you know, if I wanted to do something fancy. So um, you know, you have all these elements that you can just drag on the page and, and customize. Um, but let's delete that for now. So let's say we wanted to add an image. It's going to go to add and then, uh, no, actually we're not, I, I did already to save us some time, uh, upload some. So add browse images. Uh, maybe we just want to have for an afterward, maybe we just show a picture. It doesn't really matter. It's just to show you how you can kind of build that out. So we show a picture of the salon and maybe a button that says, uh, register here, right? So you'll see you have a lot of options here. I'm not going to walk you through all of that, but it's quite intuitive in terms of like how you build your email. So when we feel that we're good with that, we can do save and exit. You can also use this one if you wanted to save it as, in as a template, because then you know you can use that template ongoingly if you have a certain format that you've created for email they want to reuse. But we're just going to do save and exit. Um, yeah, we can use that. Uh, and what this will do now is just take us to where we can add a bit more details so we can specify who should receive this. And uh, let's now we just say send to everyone. We can personalize so like the two field, the two field in the email. What should that say? Should it just be the email address, which might not be so nice? It's nicer to have like just their first name when they receive the email. So that's where what they will see in the to field. And then you can customize the from field. So who should this be coming from? What should it say as kind of a name? I think John is fine. Uh, and then we want to add a subject line. Uh, and generally, when we write a subject line for our email newsletters, we want it to kind of spark some curiosity and like make people interested in opening it, right? So if we're doing event, an event, maybe we want to do like you're, you're invited, let's say. Um, could could add some emojis in here as well. Um, if we want, I don't know what would fit an event. Uh, ah, I'm not going to spend time on that. We'll do a store. So you're invited store and then you can you can change the preview text. So basically that is you, you'll see, you know, the customers will see the subject line and then below they will see the start of the email. Uh, so you can customize what they should see there. So maybe we say join us for a really special evening. Okay, and then we'll do save. Um, and then the content we just worked on. So let's say we're happy with that and we want to send this out. Uh, we might want to give it a name actually. So it doesn't say untitled, but this could be after. So this is what we see when we manage our email later on. After work, invite, save. And then we could go ahead and, go ahead and send this out. So we either do schedule uh, if we want to send it in advance or we do send if we want to if we want to send it out to our 150 subscribers and it will just send to everyone. So I'm not going to hit that now. Uh, but that's basically how we how we would uh, do a email campaign that we want to send out. And the question was also like, can I do that for um, my uh, like VIP members only? So because uh, as you could see, we could see there was an information on who has an active membership. So if we wanted to send an email to those, what I would do is to create a segment first. So under audiences, you will go to segments. Um, and I will create a new segment that we call members. Um, and then you can add some conditions for who should be part of this segment group. So in our case, I would go active membership is yes. So everyone then who has this uh, information that they have an active membership, they will be considered a member. So we can review that segment and we will see 
So we have two contacts now that have an active membership. So uh, Deborah that we looked at and someone more. So then we go save segment. And basically what you would do uh, when you're gonna send out your campaign is just, uh, let's actually go back to this one, the after work invite. Um, and uh, let's say we wanted to send this not to everyone, but only to our members. We'll go to edit who we send it to. And then the audience is still John Salon, but rather than all subscribers, we will use segments now where we have members existing, right? So we select that and we go save. And now you will see that this will only be sent to two people. So that's how I would manage um, any like memberships. And if you want to do like a VIP send out, uh, specifically to to members um, so that really shows you like how to create a newsletter and um, it show you know we've covered also how to set up the integrations right so you get the customers in and how to send that out and um, what you might want to do is also to collect like because what we do now is synchronize across the customers right and uh, so we can email our customers but you might also want to collect other people who are not our customers, who are potentially new customers. Um, and you, you know, want other ways of getting that. So in order to, to, to do that, uh, I would go to audience at audience uh, and then sign up forms. So this is where we can create a form that we can leave on our website, for example, to subscribe to our newsletter um, or somewhere, you know, where we want people to, to be able to sub subscribe. And, Generally, what I would say as a principle is just like if you're not running a newsletter where you don't have like email communication up and running for your existing customers, uh, I would really like focus on that first because there's always a lot of value for you in just making sure that your business is top of mind with your existing customers and also that you can, you know, use newsletters to introduce new services when you have that. Uh, basically, give them a reason to come back more often and to spend more with you when they are back. Like. You know that's what we can use this for because uh, there's a bit of work like if we want to go out and collect people who are not customers we need to give them a reason to opt in to our email list right um where a few people wake up in the morning thinking like oh i want more emails in my inbox right but we need to give them a reason to do that obviously just like newsletter subscribe is like a value in itself right if you're sending out good emails and you're giving tips and you know you're doing things um but you want to make sure you provide some type of value but, um, that, you know, if you wanted to add this to your website, one way of doing it is uh, you can use embedded forms. You can do a pop-up. Let's say we wanted to just embed a form on our website. Uh, we can select that. And it would look like this. And then we can decide, okay, do we want to collect the first, the first name as well or just the email address? Let's just leave it at that. Uh, and we do continue. And you'll get this HTML code that you can grab and drop on your website. So that's one way of doing it. And there's also other ways that we can uh, set up, um, you know, forms where we can capture people on our mail list. Uh, probably what I would use, like if you're if you're using a website platform like Shopify or Squarespace, you can use form integrations as well, which because um, Mailchimp is a you know very popular platform, so most of the website builders would have an integration with Mailchimp, and then you can actually build you know, what it should look like when people join your email list on your website uh, using that tool, which is a bit more powerful than, you know, the embedded forms you have here. And um, so whatever, this will really depends on which website builder you're using, um, but you can most likely connect that to your MailChimp account as well. And um, so that's one way of doing it. Another way of doing it as well is you're actually using forms within MangoMint. And um, so let's say you do Maybe you do permanent makeup um, and you have a form um, that you set up in MangoMint where people can maybe, you know, submit a picture of their eyebrows uh, where you basically take that and you, you know, do a drawing and come back with what, you know, what you could do in the service for them or something like, like a digital type of consultation, right? It's a great way of like providing value, making people want to leave their email address, their contact details because you're giving them value back, right? through an online consultation like that. But like there's many ways that we could work to collect more email addresses if we wanted. But as a general principle, I would still say, let's focus on our existing customers and um, making sure that we you know, have uh, email communication to them first before we go do that. Um, 
so to wrap this up, I just wanted to sh sh give a little bit of an overview of some more advanced features that are available to you. So automations is one. Um, and automations is really like where we we want to have emails that are being sent out automatically to our customers uh, depending on different events. So it could be, for example, when a new customer books with you for the first time. Um, it could be things like when they have a birthday, because I saw that question was here as well. Um, we could set that up. So like when they have a birthday, we do a birthday send out. We could do when they interact with something on your website, we could kick off an automation and send something out. We can get really clever with automations and do a lot of things. Uh, but generally, like with the standard integration that we have with MailChimp and what I'm leading you through now, what that is doing is updating details right on the client uh, from the client in Mangomint in, into MailChimp. So you will have things like, uh, you know, uh, when they join their list, if they sign up for a membership, like we saw, for example, we could start an automation. So let me just do a kind of a standard example, uh, which would be like a welcome series, just to see how that works. And uh, so I don't have any automation set up in here, but let's say we wanted to do a welcome sequence. Uh, and that's there's also some pre-built ones in here, uh, like the birthday we talked about, or welcome new contacts. So let's let's use this one. As you can see what that looks like. Um, so we use uh, this predefined one. Um, so what this does is that this will start when someone joins your email list, which basically means when a customer books with you for the first time, because they will then be synchronized across to MailChimp uh, and this automation will start. Um, so we can then send out a series of emails after that. So maybe like as they just book, they will likely get some other notifications about their appointment and so on. So maybe we say, okay, but a few days later, we want to introduce our team maybe. Um, so what we would do is just uh, go into this one uh, and you can add a journey point. We can do a time delay. So let's say from when they join, we want to wait three days uh, and then we want to send out an email so create an email maybe this would be introduce the team is what we're going to do there and then after that we might want to wait a little bit longer give them a time delay of one week and after that we want to send another email where we maybe introduce um, maybe we introduce like our social media um, social media and uh, maybe that's enough actually but it kind of shows you how you can build out these automations and you can get really clever here if you wanted you could like after that we could have a uh, like an if else statement where we basically check like okay if this person is a member or something like whatever we want we want them to take different paths in this automation and other things should happen so we can get quite clever with this um and also like if you wanted to because i said like uh, what this integration does is it synchronizes the data of the client profile it doesn't synchronize things like uh, when a client purchases a product for example like the standard integration doesn't do that we do have support for that and if that is something that you're interested in so you wanted to have an automation that starts whenever someone buys a specific product for example um, we can help you with that as well. And I would just encourage you to reach out to support if you have some of these like more specific use cases um, that you want to have set up in your business. But just having like a welcome sequence, I think is a good, uh, is, you know, it's a good starting point as well. So uh, let's leave that for now. The other thing I just wanted to mention as well before we um, start to wrap up is also like you could use uh, MailChimp also for SMS. So we focused a lot on we focused on email now, which is the core of the MailChimp platform is to send out emails. Uh, but also MailChimp has different integrations. I just wanted to mention for you as well um, an integration called um, I think it's called Simple Text. Um, so since we have all the client data with phone numbers as well synchronized over, you could use this add-on within MailChimp to uh, also send out text messages, for example. I'm not going to go into all the details. I just wanted to make you aware that that is, uh, that is also available there. 
So those are some of the more advanced things um, that we can do. And I think, uh, you know, as we, there you are, as we um, start to go into MailChimp, you'll see that there's a ton of different options in there. Um, I'm more like showing you an overview of all you can do and you can get really creative there. Um, because naturally, like, but just using a newsletter, I think is a great way to just like stay top of mind with your existing clients and having this integration really enables you to, you know, keep your contacts synced uh, and up to date. Um, and in terms of cost, like if you want to get started with this, so if you're on a standard plan within the Mango Mint, there's no additional cost on the Mango Mint side to set this up. Uh, really, the cost will depend on which plan you need with MailChimp. So how many contacts do you need to be able to support or like which features do you want at MailChimp? So the price will vary slightly as we saw earlier. Uh, if you're on the essentials plan uh, within Mango Mint, there is a $25 fee for activating uh, the MailChimp integration, uh, but again, on the standard plan, that will be included. So um, I think we managed to cover quite a lot uh, within that uh, within the time we had together today. I hope you found that helpful and that you feel equipped to go and, and set up the integration with MailChimp uh, following this. Should you run into any issues or have any questions, our support team is, of course, available to help you um, along the way. So that's what I had to share with you today. I uh, wish you a great rest of the day. Thank you, everyone.